exactly will be on tomorrow's test, you might ask? How many oh questions? Gosh. Janie, a question. Well, anyway, that's what you will be on tomorrow. I thought you might ask that. Okay. I would anticipate the following. And just notice in general principles to keep in mind. Whether there's 42 or 43 questions, I haven't decided. I think it's 42 or 43. But the closer we get to 1776, the more and more detailed, the more and more questions. So like 60% of the test, I would say, is... 1763 to 1776. So, like, starting with that chart and the Proclamation Act and ending with the Declaration, that's where most of the test is. So, it's not to say don't study the 1500s, but there's less and less the further back you go. Um, so, that said, I think it will go in chronological order. So, I guess the first two questions will just be generally like, why did Europeans come to the New World type of thing? 1400s, 1500s. Uh, then there'll be questions, a couple questions about Spain and Cortez and the Aztecs. That's the first one I look at with some detail. It could be one of those questions you guys hate. Like, all of these are reasons Cortez conquered the Aztecs except. And you have to, like, you know, figure out the one that's not. Then I would say there could be the trick question that we did in class. What was the first permanent European settlement in the New World? Permanent European? Good. What was the first English settlement in the New World? English. The first not permanent English settlement in the New World? Yeah. No. No. Roanoke? Roanoke. First permanent English settlement was? It was European. It was? What country? Is it in yeah. Spain. Spain. Roanoke. Why is Roanoke not more famous? Because it disappeared. First permanent English settlement? Jamestown. Jamestown. So make sure you have your English versus your European versus your Spanish versus your permanent versus your non permanent, etc. So Roanoke's not permanent. Your Roanoke, they never made it. Although people do what they like. Okay, then I'd say a few of those legacies of those early civilizations, things like House of Burgesses, uh, Mayflower Compact, New England Town Meetings, etc. Um, there are meetings in New England by town where they decide all the local stuff until they were cut off centuries later by the infamous. Intolerable acts. Make sure you all study tonight. Okay, <laughs> then I would know obviously some key terms once you're done with the early ones. Salutary neglect, mercantilism, navigation acts, etc. Okay, so now I think we're at like through about a quarter of the test. And notice we've done pretty much like 150 years already, and it's only a quarter of the test of a 300 year test. The other warning besides, for detailed questions, besides Cortez conquered the Aztecs, and I guess for those terms is, I'm pretty sure I'm going to so I'm going to make apologies in advance. I grew up in Massachusetts. You have to know the difference between the Pilgrims and the other pyramids, between Plymouth and Massachusetts Bay Company. You know, between the people who came who are like the really, really crazy, like separate from the Church of England, and the people who came 10 years later who just like purify the Church of England, and, and that's, and it's the Massachusetts State Colony that eventually Plymouth, like, usurps, or Plymouth sort of joins the Massachusetts State Colony. Um, then, back to uh, general questions for the next 100 years, which we did quickly, like, differences between New England middle and southern colonies. Um, then a couple of things I would make sure that you have from your homework, because these are homework we didn't do in class. Roger Williams, Dominion of New England. Roger Williams, Dominion of New England. And then Albany Congress and Albany Plan of Union we did only briefly in class, but that was a big part of the homework too. All right, we're not even halfway through the test yet, and we're up to 1754, the start of the French and Indian War. So the last, 654, so the last 60% of the test is just the last 20 years. So the French and Indian War, Three questions. I would definitely study that, including especially the causes. 
And then I would definitely, definitely, definitely study in huge detail that chart we did of the Proclamation Act, the Sugar Act, the Stamp Act, the Declaratory Act, the Townsend Acts, the, tea, the Massacre of the Tea Party, the Intel Rocks, and the Quebec Act. Lots of those. Yes? Do you have to differentiate between each one? Uh, absolutely. You know, <laughs> which of these is an external tax, which of these okay. is an internal tax, which of these was punitive, which of these actually shows mercantilism, like, which of these is a punishment, which of these actually shows mercantilism, in other words, it actually shows the British gaining money directly from it. Like, yeah, I'd say you have to know these, like, inside out, outside in, you know. Which of these is a misunderstanding? Like, I would really know those eight or nine acts. Yes? Yeah, I think they were concurrent. I think they were both in the spring of 1774. And I will not ask you that, but I will ask some order of events questions, which I'll get to in a second. But not that, because I don't know it, and I'm not even sure anyone would know it unless you could dig up Parliament's record from 1774. Um, question? So we don't need the dates for the act? I would certainly know the. I, I would know that they're all between 1763 and 1774. If you're going to memorize. Three dates, I would go 1763, 1774, and 1776. If you're only going to memorize one, I would just go 1763, because that 1776 is common sense. So 1763 is end of the French and Indian War. And if you can use 1776 from common sense, you know all that stuff was in there. But rather than knowing the year or the date or the month, you could just know the cause. Like the Stamp Act leads to the repeal of the Stamp Act, which leads to the Declaratory Act. Or the Townsend Acts leads to more protests, which leads to British troops going there, which leads to the Boston Massacre. Like, sort of, the Tea Party leads to the Intolerable Acts. Like, I would have it organized in my, I wouldn't sit there and memorize them so you can, like, like, I would never ask you to, like, spit them back in order, but I would know how they relate to each other, certainly. Yes? Well, like, you know before you said which of the acts, like, is mercantilism? Yeah. So would, like, the Tea Act, yeah, well, did the British gain money out of it? Yeah, but like it was cheaper. Okay. Yeah, that's a good point. I don't think I would say this T versus the, the sharper. Like, that's really, I would say like the T versus the proclamation or something like that. You know, where it's, there's money involved. Okay, so honestly, what I just said is like a good 20% of the test. There's got to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. So now we're up to like, I'd say 25%. So now we're up to like question 30. So now we're up to like almost three quarters of the way through the test. It's just those 10 or 12 questions on those acts, on proclamation stamp sugar. So that I would really study here. Okay, someone asked about order of events. Yes, there absolutely could be like, put these in cor correct order. The intolerable and, correct and Quebec Act would not both be on there. But absolutely, 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 things like Stamp Act versus, or like Tea Party versus Townsend Acts, Massacre versus Townsend Acts. Like, you're going to have to know how they all sort of related to each other. So, I wouldn't say you have to have the dates memorized, but the cause and effect, I would really go through for those questions. All right, then there's a couple easy questions. Common sense, one question on the Quebec Act. Uh, Oh, you guys are gonna hate those. Okay, and there's questions like, which of these five events happened before the first Continental Congress? Which of these five happened after the first, after the Continental Congress? Which of these happened before the second Continental Congress? Which happened afterwards? So, I would say there's two morals to the story. One, know the difference between the first Continental Congress and the second Continental Congress. Two, you go over that don't sit home and memorize dates, but try to think of, okay, what caused it. I think when I even did it in class, I was like, cause of the First Continental Congress, the Intolerable Acts. So hopefully you could come up with them as something that came before. Or like, you know, um, effect of the Second Continental Congress, that or Battle of Bunker Hill, that kind of thing. So I wouldn't sit there and be memorizing dates, especially when there's so many questions from the same 1774, 1775, 1776, but I would really try to have the cause and effect in your head. The first Continental Congress was just like the meeting after the Intolerable Acts to show support for Boston. They boycott and so on. The second Continental Congress was after Lexington and Concord, and it's like, it's on. 
or making an army, or making the navy, or appointing Washington the leader, it's go time. Um, let's see here. Yeah. Um, general questions so far. And then I'd say the last few, and I'm not sure how to study for them. Three, four, five, six. It's like speaker, it's like speaker's questions. Like which one of these considers mercantilism the most important? Which one of these blames a navigation expert? What's mercantilism? Here? Like an actual definition? It's when the colonies exist for the economic benefit of the mother country. Okay, okay. Which one of these uh, would cite political reasons? Which one of these would cite uh, the colonists' determination to be self-governed? Which one of these would cite Sam Adams and say you'll have to look for like the Tea Party, that kind of thing? So it's, again, I guess this is another way of saying, this is another way of asking questions about all of those acts. Proclamation, sugar, stamp. And even within the acts, it's a proclamation, stamp, uh, massacre, tea party, and colorable. Take those five, you're going to get multiple, multiple, multiple questions. Yao. Yeah. Um, what uh, navigation acts? Yes. They're the general laws passed beginning in the 1600s. Trying to, they're just general tax laws passed by the British as they tried to enforce mercantilism. But here's where that next term, because of salutary neglect, the colonists largely disobeyed the Navigation Acts until the end of the French and Indian War in 1763. There's that key date to memorize again if you only memorize one. The colonists largely ignored the Navigation Act because of salutary neglect until the end of the French and Indian War in 1763 when the British now want to start to collect money. <coughs> yes? Is it just multiple plays? Yes. Could be a second, or, or could be a great awakening question to have in the second day. And is, the, is it four multiple choices or five? Well, last year you only had four, and I want an easy win, uh, so it's five. Yeah. It's five? Yeah. yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. No. Why do they do that? Only five? We had five last year. We had five last year. No, no, five what? Not really. Couldn't it be like five six or six? Five. We had like four. All right. So let's see. You know, I don't get that. Yeah, well, look at how many of you guys are on the AP side. There's five cards. Four of them actually. There's four of them. No, but Jeff, what did you get on the AP side? I did not. What did you get on the AP side? I did not. Um, all right. Are there other questions? What do you have? I don't know. My wife doesn't cook it again. I have leftover pizza because last night's totally crappy football. But she, she's a really good cook, so if she comes home, I don't know. You love that football game. Do you like the Jets? I do not like the Jets. All right. Any final questions? Who is the biggest Jet fan? All right. You are evicted. Let's do a final question. Thank you.